continuing the story dissection and review, the last one was about countermeasures, and this one is the second countermeasures video. Now, in all the stories, you'll see how evacuation was the main priority at the beginning. All the intelligent people that saw what was going on around them and noticed and realized what they had to do to make it evacuated, and that was their key priority. Now, at the very beginning of such an invasion, people are not going to have access to proper equipment to take on mechanized and armored forces and aviation assets and things like that. So what they're going to do is, is they're going to evacuate uh, if they want to survive to struggle another day. Now, they fled to the woods. They fled underground in cities. Uh, and who and who was able to fled, you know, into the mountains and other hardened areas, and they dug their own sorts of uh, fortifications. They they used their picks, their shovels. They stowed away uh, all their supplies. Now, if you really really want to, I highly urge you to go watch the playlist called New Documentary because that's all about the rural Broken Bow. Uh, uh, battle for the initial capture of the town, and it shows the types of delaying actions that were a countermeasure to buying them valuable time to evacuate the town, and you can see it on a battle map. You can see it unfold. There's also the Battle of Eagle Town, which shows uh, as their sort of like partisan forces developed, uh, that was really their first victory against the invaders. Now that that's a good that's actually a good one too. And if you do go watch those, I suggest you read the descriptions and pay very close attention to what that looked like. Now, grid square cordons are something that will occur once they've attained control of all towns, cities, human settlements, tertiary, primary, secondary, the whole the whole works. Now, Countermeasures at first, for a lot of people, are going to be very primitive things, uh, such as uh, my most recent community posts. I highlighted the importance of a certain type of implement uh, that roughly costs twenty dollars. It's it's glass and combustibles and and such. Now those things are used a lot in the stories because that's what they had available to them. That was their countermeasure at first against armor, at least until they could get better implements in the stories, in the urban, the, the rural. Uh, other countermeasures is they use terrain to their advantage, and that even includes rubble. Uh, if you watch the 96-hour invasion playlist and you watch the Battle of uh, Kansas City, there's actually a part that, in that that talks about how they let some vehicles get stuck in rubble before they attempted assaults on them. Now, they were repelled with heavy casualties, but that's the type, that's the nature of, of this type of a conflict that the stories are about, that they're portraying. There's going to be heavy, heavy, heavy loss on the American side, for a lot less on the invader side. But, again, there are countermeasures to everything, and the stories convey them all very well. About as accurate as you can get um, for that type of a conflict. So, they improvised, and they did very similar things that were done overseas, like when I was in Iraq. Um, they used those types of things, and sometimes they were pretty effective. But they also lost heavily as a result, too. But... You know, I put a lot of the things in the story that I know for a fact are things that would be occurring. So, uh, I will continue more in the next video about actual tactics employed in the stories. So, by the characters.